Welcome back to my YouTube channel. As we prepare for this forthcoming Jam 2025, there are some questions that Jam repeats every single year on work, energy, and power. I will guide you through most of the questions in case you see it in this forthcoming exam so you can be able to understand how to solve it. With no further ado, let's get right into the video. A constant force of 40 Newton acting on a body initially at rest gives an acceleration of 0.1 meters per second square for 4 seconds. Calculate the work done. Option A, 8 joules. Option B, 10 joules. Option C, 32 joules. Option D, 160 joules. Before we could solve this question, let us set our parameters. We are given a constant force F. To be 4 newton okay then acting on a body initially at rest that means the initial velocity u equals what zero but it has an acceleration a of 0 0.1 meters per second square and the time t is giving us four seconds right then we are looking for work done okay then you must remember that work done is force times distance. So work done is force times distance, right? But we have force in this equation, but we don't have what? Distance. So I'm going to use the equation of motion to get our distance. We are going to use this particular equation, x, which is distance, is equal to ut plus 1 over 2at squared. Since we have all the parameters given, what you're looking for is the distance. And once we get the distance, you're going to substitute it in here to get our work done. I hope that is clear. All right, so let's go. X is equal to my U is 0 multiplied by my time is what? 4. Then it is equal to 1 over 2 times my A is 0 0.1 multiplied by 4 square. I hope that is clear. Now... X is equal to everything becomes 0 plus 1 over 2 times 0 0.1 times 16. Okay? By the time you divide this, you are going to have what? 8. Is that clear? All right. Now what we have gotten so far, my distance X is equal to 0 0.1 multiplied by 8. Right? Is going to give me 0 0.8 meters, right? Okay, now for us to get the work done, work done is equal to the force multiplied by distance. Now we are going to say that work done was my force. My force is what? 40 multiplied by 0 0.8, okay? You don't actually need calculator for this one because this zero cancels this zero, right? This is a positive, this is a negative, cancels each other. So we are left with work done is equal to 4 multiplied by what? 8. And my answer is equal to 32 joules. Okay? Now this is how you can solve this question on work done. In case you have acceleration looking for distance, you first get your distance and apply it to your force to get the total work done. I hope that is clear. And from what we have gotten so far, the correct option to this question is option... C. A boy drags a bag of rice along a smooth horizontal floor with a force of 2 newton applied at an angle of 60 degrees to the floor. The work done after a distance of 3 meters is what? Option A, 6 joules. Option B, 5 joules. Option C, 4 joules. And option D, 3 joules. Now for us to solve this question, we must understand that this is a work done in an inclined plane. So I'm going to use an illustration to explain what I mean by that. Okay, now this is the bag of rice, which is the load, right? Okay, now this is the load that the boy is dragging. Now, it's covered a distance of 3 meters. Okay, and the boy drags it with a force F of Q Newton. We made an angle theta to be... 60 degrees now for us to solve it 
the formula for work done in an inclined plane because this is resolved to the what? Horizontal components. You must make respect of the angle. And because it is inclined to the horizontal, it deals with cos, right? So the work done is equal to F cos theta multiplied by distance. Exactly. So let's simply substitute what we have by saying that the work done is equal to my force is 2 cos 60 multiplied by 3. Exactly. Now, the work done is equal to 2 multiplied by, by cos 60 is 1 over 2, which is the same thing as 0 0.5 multiplied by 3. Right? By the time you cancel this, the work done is equal to 3 joules. From what I've gotten so far, the correct option is what? D. Now, if you look at this question critically, gem don't normally give you questions that you have to stress your head because they're going to give you angles that you, is a special angle that you must know. So you must know these special angles like angle of 60, cos 60, sin 60, cos 30, sin 30. All these are special angles, sin 90. Is that clear? So that is how you're able to solve this problem. Let's move to the next one. An object is moving at a velocity of 5 meters per second. At what height must a similar body be situated to have a potential energy equal in value with the kinetic energy of the moving body? Option A, 20.0 meters. Option B, 1.3 meters. Option C, 1.0 meters. Option D, 25.0 meters. Now, this body that was moving with a speed of 5 meters per second, we are asked to find the height at which the kinetic energy will be equal to potential energy. Simply put, that kinetic energy is equal to potential what? energy, right? Now, you know the formula for potential and kinetic energy. Let's just put it inside what we have, and we see our answer smiling by saying that kinetic energy is 1 over 2 mv square now it is equals to potential energy which is what mgh right now something is common the mass cancels what mass we're looking for h okay so this is v square all over 2 is equals to g what gh so we can divide both sides by g of course we know that g is always what constant now we have this okay now this cancel this so we have that h is equals to v square over what 2g now what do we do by saying that the velocity is what 5 times 5 which is 5 square all over 2 times what 10 now we work on that what do we have 5 times 5 is what 25 of which this can cancel this to give us one this cancel this give us what 4 right so we have 5 over Four. Okay, so my h is equals to 5 over 4, of which we should divide it 5. 4 into 5 is going to give me 1. 1, remainder what? 1, right? You add what? 0. 4 into 10 is going to give me what? 2. Remainder what? 2. Then we write 2 and we add what? 0. 4 into 10 is going to give me what? 5. So we have 5, all right? So approximately from what we have so far, my answer is 1.3 meters. So this is the height at which the potential energy equals the kinetic energy. Exactly. So if you have such a question like this, normally they don't give you mass, so you don't need to look for the mass. The mass is going to cancel out each other and you get the unknown, which is the height. And our correct option from what we have gotten so far is option B. If the force and the velocity on a system are each reduced simultaneously by half, the power of the system is what? Option A, doubled. Option B, constant. Option C, reduced to a quarter. Option D, reduced by half. You must remind yourself what is power. Power is equals to mgh over time, right? And it's also equals to force times distance over time. Now it's also equals to force multiplied by what? Velocity. Now from what we have, they said if the force and the velocity of a system each reduce by half, okay? So what are we trying to say? We are trying to say that the force is half 
and the velocity is half also, right? So what would be the power? Now from this question, it means that the force is half and the velocity is also what? Half, right? Now, if you go by saying that power is equal to F what? V. So what do we mean? The force is 1 over 2, that is half, and the velocity is half. So it's going to give me what? 1 over 4 watt. It means that the power is reduced to a quarter, right? So the, part, the answer to this question is one quarter. So we have the option what? D. Hope that is clear. A water pump rated 4 kilowatts is used to pump water from a deep well 25 meters deep. Calculate the quantity of water it will pump out per second. And we are giving G to be 10 meters per second square. Option A is 16 kilograms. Option B is 160 kilograms. Option C is 1.6 kilograms. Option D is 8 kilograms. Now let's bring out the parameters we have in this question for us to know what and what we are going to use to solve this question. All right, so we have that the power P is giving us what? 4 kilowatts. What is kilo? Kilo means 1,000, right? So this is equivalent to 4,000 watts, right? You cannot solve without changing this kilo. So you must change it. Just know that one kilo is equivalent to 1,000. All right, so we have that the, this, the height, H, is 25 meters, okay? Then G is constant, which is 10 meters per second square. And we are saying that we calculate the quantity of water. That is the what? The mass of water, and it is per second. That means time is what? One second. Now, using the formula, we have that P is equals to mgh over what time? Since we are looking for m, let's make it a subject by saying pt is equals to mg what h. Now m is equals to pt over gh. Now let's put in what we have. We have m is equals to what's my p? My p is my p is four thousand four thousand multiplied by my time is what? 1. Then divided by my g is 10 and my height is 25. So let's work it out by saying that 10 into itself 1, we divide, cancel out this, right? So we have 5 into itself, I have what? 5, right? Now 5 into 40, I have 8. Then this gives me what? 80, okay? Now 5 into itself 1. Now 5 into 8, I have 1 remainder, what? 3, I put it here, 30. 5 into 30 is going to give me what? 6, right? Now, the quantity of water, which is the mass, is equivalent, or it is equal to 16 kilograms. I hope that is clear. And from what we have so far, the correct option to this question is option A. I hope this video was able to help someone. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Turn on the notification button to get notified each time I post videos. And lastly, do not forget to share so that other students that are preparing for this forthcoming exam can watch it and learn from it. I will see you next time in the next one. Bye for now.